Uh, welcome back to another video update from Streetsboro City Schools. I am Andreas Johansson, Director of Operations here on campus, and with me is uh, Mr. Randy Tvipa. He's the Administrator in Charge of Athletics and uh, Maintenance. Uh, Randy's going to share a little bit with us today about cleaning protocols uh, for uh, our maintenance staff, as well as some of our expectations around teachers and students, and uh, talk a little bit about the products that we're using in and around our classroom and, and on the rest of the campus. So, Mr. Tvipa, take it away. Thank you, Andreas. Hello, everyone. I just want to take a few minutes of your time to give you an update on where we are in terms of our cleaning protocols uh, as we start the uh, beginning of school, uh, what we're doing in terms of cleaning. I want to talk about expectations of teachers and students, of course, some of the equipment that we're purchasing, and then I'll give everybody an idea of what we have currently in stock. So let me start with the cleaning protocols. Our cleaning pro protocols are the same as they are and have been for years. Uh, we use the same products. Um, we, we are um, um, using Nutristat 64 to make sure that we're getting the product that uh, is used in most school districts that is most effective for cleaning. Uh, the Nutristat 64 uh, product is something that uh, in its con concentrated state uh, appears to be far more potent than what we use. And what I mean by that is if you look at the safety data sheet that comes with that uh, product, um, you would read something that says it's dangerous to children and so forth. But we use two ounces per gallon of water, two ounces of Nutristat per gallon of water, which really dilutes the, uh, the product and makes it safe for kids, makes it safe for teachers and staff. Um, so we're using that product on a regular basis. We have been for 10 years. Um, it's been very effective in our cleaning protocols. Uh, so that's what we're going to do first. Once we completed that in each building every night, uh, we are going to spend two hours uh, each night in each building uh, using our vector fogger machines. We now have six vector fogger machines uh, throughout the district, four in the buildings, and then two for the bus garage. Vector fogger machines are similar to what you might see as a, a backpack uh, uh, leaf sprayer, for example. It, it's, it's easy to handle, it's lightweight, but it's extremely effective. Uh, so we'll use those every night in every building, every classroom, every restroom, and every general uh, operating area in the district. Um, so that's the vector fogging machine. We also have ordered four new Clorox 360 machines, and these are a little bit more high tech in terms of what they're capable of doing. The end product is the same, the end result is the same as the foggers but they're a little bit quicker. They're um, a little bit more industrial in, in its uh, appearance. Um, we expect to get those approximately September 18th. That's, that's our target date that we're supposed to get the, the new machines in. And so to reiterate- so what Randy, are we gonna just, do? Oh. Well, I was just gonna jump in there and say, you know, on the buses and in the rest of the districts, these are products that we've been using for years. And, and so we're just sort of stepping it up. On the buses, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna clean in between runs, use the same chemical, Nutristat. Uh, it has a yellow color to it, so it's easy to distinguish from anything else, um, but it's no different than what we have been doing. We're just gonna do more of it. And then in addition to that, we'll use the foggers in classrooms and buses. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's perfect. And I appreciate that input because it's, it's imperative that we not only clean the classrooms, but those buses as well, and those, where those kids are getting transported. Um, <clears throat> what do we expect from the teachers? What do we expect from our students? So what we're, we're asking our staff to do is this. Uh, teacher has a classroom. They exit the classroom in, uh, at the end of the period. We're asking our teachers to walk around with a, uh, a spray bottle and spray the desktops at that time. That allows us three to five minutes of saturation time on the desktop for that uh, for our Nutristat 64 to be effective and work the best. Uh, there's no question if we could use 10 minutes, it would work great, but the three to five minutes is very effective and will do the job that we're, that we're trying to accomplish. Um, so that's gonna happen after every class, every, every class period. Uh, so we feel that that's gonna really make a difference. In addition to the hand sanitizing and, and the social distancing and wearing the mask, uh, we feel that the combination of these uh, components will make a safer school for all our students and staff. So what do we have in stock right now, ready to use for the year? Uh, I'm just gonna go through a list of things that we, we have uh, available for us. 
Uh, we have 3,000, I'm sorry, 300 gallons of hand sanitizer, 150 face shields, 1,000 disposable gowns, 300 pairs of gloves, 14,000 masks, and 50 thermometers. Um, those are things that we have in stock available to our staff and, and our teachers uh, at any point in time. So we really feel comfortable where we're at with uh, uh, our uh, safety materials and all of our cleaning supplies. Um, they're very difficult to get right now, but we ordered ours far in advance to make sure we would have them at the start of school. So Andreas, I don't know if you want to expand on anything else on that. That's what I wanted to share to everybody to make, try to get everybody in a comfort zone uh, just to know that our guys are working hard. We're doing a lot of good things to make sure the, uh, the classrooms are going to be safe and clean for our students when they come back to school. Yeah, I think it's a challenging time for everyone. And, and the logistics, like you mentioned, is just, uh, it's uh, very difficult to get a hold of some of this equipment. Um, I, we did the same thing on transportation side. And, and, and like you all know, like we started ordering things uh, for our drivers, for our buses, you know, back in, in May and June, because we saw sort of coming back to school uh, the way it is now and, and, uh, and, and we're, we're hoping that we have prepared as best as we can. Um, again, the, I know we've gotten a lot of questions about the Nutristat uh, from, from staff and from parents. And again, it's, it's a chemical that we've been using for a long time to disinfect our surfaces. Um, on the buses, we'll do the same thing. We won't do the wiping. Uh, so Nutristat does uh, fine uh, if it just lets sit too. And so on our buses, our plan is to kind of spray it with a light mist in between the runs and then let that air dissipate and sort of air, air lift. And then that'll still uh, work its magic uh, with the chemical that's in there to kind of kill viruses and whatnot. Uh, and then we'll do a deep cleaning uh, every, every day uh, using the fogging machines on the buses. Um, and that is sort of above and beyond our normal cleaning protocol for, I would say, any of our locations, right, including buses and, and classrooms. But it's going to take a, take a team effort. Um, I think, Mr. Tivipa, like you said, you know, like this is an addition to hand sanitizer, wearing a mask. Um, I've been out in the buildings a lot, and I see hand sanitizer stations everywhere. It's sort of like a, a trash can at Disney. So you're always within 30 feet of a hand sanitizer station, so there should be plenty uh, available. So... Thanks for that update. Uh, we'll probably have more as, uh, as time goes on and then we'll uh, put out another video update. But uh, that's it for, uh, for today. Go Rockets. Have a good day.